Well, we'd like to get the meeting started. I'd like to call to order the Board of Education, Brighton Board of Education, regular meeting of June 13th. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah, bring it to roll call, roll call, bye. Let's say for Mike. Mr. Conley? Here. Ms. Reed? Here. Mrs. Mitchell? Here. Dr. Krebs? Here. Mr. Stahl? Here. That moves us to approval agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Support. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one. Okay. <laughs> Angela has uh, movement and uh, support by Laura. Um, is there any discussion? Um, I would like to make a motion that we move item D on four actions of student handbooks down to um, for future action. That would be item D on for future action. Support. At the request of the administration and uh, several board members. Support by Mr. Conley. Do you have a second? <coughs> He's a second. Yeah, All right. Uh, any other discussion regarding the changes? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Uh, one absent. Two absent. My apologies, that was both of us. Um, this brings us to the superintendent report, Dr. Outlaw. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for being here. It's, uh, it's great to have a full room uh, full of students, and I'm really excited to be uh, doing some honors here tonight. So uh, we have uh, four shining stars that we're going to do this evening, and we're going to start off with our first group, Dr. Krebs. Um, Christine, you want to come forward and talk about your group? Thank you. Okay, hey, so thank you, Dr. Krebs, for nominating us and Dr. Ella. Um, so we are the advisors for the DEI Club, and we have a wonderful group of student leaders. Um, and I'll just tell you a little bit about our leaders here. Um, they've been working to make BHS in our community a more inclusive space to learn and grow. They have been working to educate and advocate for social justice issues at our school, within our community, and globally. Um, over the summer, we partnered with London Beauty um, and also at the Holiday Glow to raise funds to create the care closet at EHS, and that's what they're being recognized for today. They also received um, generous donations from NHS and the PTO. So the care closet was opened in September. It's open to all of our BHS students. It is located in D16, and it is a space created to provide necessities for students in need. So students can access this space confidentially during all lunches. And our care closet has toiletries, laundry detergent, toilet paper, school supplies, snacks, and protein drinks. So a couple other things that I wanted to highlight that the club has done this year. We partnered with the Space Yoga Center and the Washtenaw Refugee Welcome to make welcome art therapy bags for Afghan children being resettled in the Washtenaw County. Um, they also led the week-long Hate Has to Go campaign at the high school during Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday week, promoting kindness and acceptance and allyship. And then um, right before spring break, they led a community drive that resulted in Brighton being able to donate three carloads of baby formula, diapers, children's clothing to the Ukrainian refugees. So um, they are an awesome gr group of students. Um, the care closet is being used and not abused. So we are very happy with it. 
And this is Shannon Headley. Oh, she's my co advisor. <laughs> Shannon Headley. <laughs> That's me, too. Thank you. And if you'd like the, the students to come yep, up, then, I will. Uh, I'm, I'm going to list them. all the ones who have been active. Not all of them are here, though. Okay. So um, Morgan Wilgenen was our president, and she's not here today. Rachel Oliver is here, though. Um, Catalina Boyle, Negan Gellerman, Sydney Jordan, Zachary Bosch, Madeline Beaudre, Isis Lamariski, Kira Miller, Amaria Whitby, Mary Sophia Weber, Julia Carney is our um, new president and she is here today. Delaney Johnson, Jade Taro is here today. Um, Madison Rogers, Molly McKegg, Josie Morley is here with us tonight. Amelia Gotti, Anna Fisher, Charlie Lazar Lazarlier, um, CL Mandiuk, I think Ellie Stark is here tonight, Sydney Roberts, Jessica Ridaluski, Lincoln Ramsdell, Fabo Beaudry, and Audrey Hoffman. We ask you to come up. Director Nesson, come on up. Hey, next up, I'd like to invite our autos teacher, Mr. Delaney, forward to uh, share some exciting news about some of our students. Hi, good evening. My name is Rob Delaney, and I'm the automotive instructor at Brighton High School. This is my assistant, Jerry, Ger Gerard Folk. And um, we're here tonight to... Um, Recognize some students. Our mission is to prepare young people that are aspiring automotive professionals to become automotive professionals. And um, one of the things that they can take away from our course, if they're applying themselves, is a um, industry credential. And in that, it's um, automotive service excellence certification. So I've got eight students here tonight who have achieved or attained um, that goal, and I'm very proud of them, and we're gonna go ahead and recognize them um, here very shortly. I've also got another student who um, has just done an outstanding job. She came to us as a student kind of looking for an alternative to a arts class or arts credit, and I'm very proud. She's kind of found her niche in automotive, and we're gonna recognize her as well because I see great things coming from her. So um, Jack Camilleri, Camilleri is one of our students, Christian Clower, Douglas Fiedrich. Some of these guys are here, some are not. Josh Filipowski, I know you're in the audience. Quentin Garvis, you're in the audience. Raleigh Mitzel, I don't think could be here this evening. We've got Matthew Prystash, he's here as well. And Logan Wagner. So I'd like for you guys to come up and then our Outstanding Performance Award goes to Kirsten Hoffman. So I'd like to go ahead and recognize these young people. They're outstanding. They've made my job immensely easier. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys do in the future and working with some of you next year. So. Thank 
I just do this on my hands for the future? Thank you. Okay, next up, uh, we're going to invite uh, who's going to be speaking for Senior Survivor? Kim and Sean? All right, great. Thank you. And Charlotte? Hello. Hello. Um, my name is Kim Anderson. Uh, I am formerly Kim Heber, class of 1994. You are? I'm Sean Carney, class of 1995. Look at us. Look at us. High five. <laughs> All right. We are the um, NHS advisors for Brighton's chapter of NHS. We are here tonight um, to celebrate our students and their accomplishments with Senior Survivor. For a little bit of um, backstory, just so you guys know, three years ago, COVID happened. We pivoted immediately. We already had our teams chosen and we had all of our events virtually. We obviously didn't force anybody to participate, but those that did, we had like a um, fire making competition where we actually had one of our um, students in charge of Survivor drop kindling off at each person's home. And then they made a fire at home and whoever, I think it was whoever did it the quickest one. Which was not good for streaming because I think it took two hours. I think so too. I didn't watch the whole thing. Oops. Um, we also had a really awesome cooking competition that included um, decoration and everything else. It was fantastic. We, we did make some money that year. Yeah, we did. Um, last year, uh, even though we had uh, precautionary measures, um, we ran a totally normal senior survivor. We camped in our media center, which was closed down, literally exactly what you think it looked like. A whole bunch of kids in tents in our media center. It was amazing. It was a fantastic opportunity. Now, um, at this time, I would like Lynette Daig to please get her buns up here. Come on, come on. Now, she does not like recognition at all, but let me tell you, the two of us could never pull this off year after year without this beautiful human being. Not only does she want to spend every single night, by the way, for those of you not familiar, we spend the night in the media center with our kids for four consecutive nights. Um, yes, we're in our pajamas with our students. It's very strange, but very amazing. And Lynette would literally stay every single night if we would let her. She's also our money person. So she has the most beautiful spreadsheets. If you ever need a spreadsheet made, I would like to direct you to Lynette. Um, she is our better half. There's no better way of putting it. Um, we literally couldn't do this without her. She is amazing. So stay up here. Don't run back to your seat yet. Sean, your turn. Your turn. <laughs> um, we, we've had the honor of working with five great human beings as, as our officers. So I would like to invite Michael Kramer, Callie Hurley, Ellie Stark, Riley Flynn, and Celeste Roberts, if you're here, come to com come on up and join the crew. Yes. Um, it's... We, we direct these kids, we push them in, in, in the right direction, but they really are the ones that follow through. And when I say, one, one of my favorite phrases for Survivor Week is, I'm just the adult in the room to, to make it happen. You know, they, they lead, they plan, they, they converse with us. We help push them in the right direction, but they've really gone above and beyond. I think Riley Flynn this year somewhere counted, I can't, I can't share the number, but let's just say um, for a food drive alone, it, we raised over 20K. Yeah. Um, and Survivor, you'll see the check, and it, it'll be really easy math for you later. Take the check, sir. And now <laughs> I would like to invite one of our four Survivor chair people to come up, Casey, Miss Casey Janai. Oh, you want to sit? Sure. If you could introduce somebody else. Yeah, yeah sure thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, first, I'd like to say thank you to the survivors because I was a committee chair and it was very fun, but at times it felt stressful and having such great survivors really helped because you guys didn't really need that much direction. You guys found, you know, your own way to make this a great event. Uh, I'd like to introduce Team Pink. That's Cole Ayton and Avery Morton. Cole Ayton is here today. Avery Morton is on a plane right now, so... <laughs> Um, team Blue is Riley Perry and Maggie Kirkmeyer. 
Riley's here. <laughs> um, from Team Orange, we got Julian Kozakov. Well, not Team Orange. I misspoke. Team O. And Nick Glob. Team Black was Alyssa Lester and April Fox. Team Purple, we had Holly Ireton and Grace Anthony. Team Red, Tabitha Porter and Ellie Williams. Team Yellow, we have, uh, I'm so sorry, Haley Lampkins. I'm trying not to switch your last names. And Allie Martin. Uh, Team Teal, we have the wonderful Tessa, Tessa Hillbach and Olivia Edwards. I know everyone's names. I'm just, I promise, I'm nervous. And do we have any teams that's not here in general? No, I did perfect. That's right. Okay. But besides that, I also like to shout out Jessica Kayser, who is also a committee head, but for the business portion. But really with all of these, you know, 16 kids willing to sign away a week of their lives to live at the school and raise money for an amazing cause for Mark Howell's Fund of Life, uh, I'm just so thankful for them and everything they've done, along with, of course, Mr. Carney and Ms. Anderson, because they were like our parents and they didn't let us get into any trouble. So <laughs> just, a, just a little, but not, en not enough to be in trouble. Um, you wanna? Riley, you wanna? Oh, come on, Mark? buddy. Mr. Howell, can you please join these? Absolutely. This is Mark Howell. He's awesome. And just so you guys know, he spent the night with us. Yeah, too, so. Are you ready? Is one of the signatures? Drum roll from the survivors, please. So I think this is our seventh year. I think to date we've raised three hundred and sixty-five ish thousand dollars um, to different charities. We've through this program, we've built a school and put in a community well in in Laos. We've uh, donated to Elle's Place, which is in in Ann Arbor, that provides um, therapy for kids who have lost a, um, a a parent. We've done all all sorts of things, and this is just another one of our great things. So. Three hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars. It's amazing, and it's it's a truly a community event. Like these kids, these kids are, are are the leaders. But kids show up and they're they're supporting and paying and buying things that they could get at a store or cheaper. But they realize that it's for charity and it's going to a really great cause. So. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for everything you're doing. Thank you, Casey. Great job. Hey, do you want to pass that off? Thank you. Nice job. Thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, great job. Well done. Thank you. Thank you for your effort. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your effort. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Well done. It's it great. We got plenty of time to get stuff like that. So, well done. Okay. <laughs> yep, yeah, right, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and uh, we have one more shining star. I'm going to invite uh, Scott Story forward uh, for one more recognition of a staff member.
Good evening. Uh, my name is Scott Story. I'm behavior specialist for the district. Um, I'd like to recognize um, Antoine Poe Martin. You're gonna hear me call him Coach Poe. Um, uh, Antoine has been a huge integral part for a lot of families, a lot of students, and particularly a lot of student athletes. Um, as a fellow educator, educator, I've seen firsthand the impact that he's made, um, both to families, to kids. Um, our Brighton football program was able to put together a student athlete showcase for our football players, um, which was hugely uh, important. And the fact that it was able to happen in such a short period of time is even, is even more jaw dropping. Uh, the reason why I bring that in, um, I was at the high school about two weeks prior to this event taking place. And we had one of our student athletes actually suffered a career ending injury for high school. Um, you know, he'll, he'll recoup and be fine, but it was devastating for this, this young man. Um, the event that coach Poe and the Brighton football program was able to put in place, allowed this student athlete to make a connection with a college that was in attendance and received a scholarship. Um, I think one of the, the greatest things about coach Poe is a, should be just coach connection because that's what he lives. He lives by. Uh, he instills that in our students and our student athletes and stresses the importance of that with, with families. Um, and then for me, I guess the last part is as a, as a dad and a, and a community member, um, you know, my son, Jack has known coach Bo for less than a year. Um, and I would put him other than myself, my, uh, his grandfather is probably one of the biggest adults that made an impact on him. Um, I've heard my son, have really difficult conversations in the middle of the night with Coach Poe um, about colleges, about choices, about failure, about successes. Um, so to hear that from an educator outside of our regular scheduled day um, is hugely important and should be recognized. So that's that's one of the biggest reasons I brought him here today. Um, the net that he's able to cast is, is is huge. And to do this all within one year well, one year and a couple of days here, um, is truly uh, jaw dropping. So I, I wanted to bring him here, make sure you guys get to know him because he's a, he's one you want to keep. So, Coach Poe. Thank you. Okay, uh, next up, uh, I have uh, Mr. Scaling is going to recognize our uh, retiring teachers. Yes, we, uh, we've invited uh, uh, some of our, our retirees here this evening uh, as a formal recognition. Um, we have principals here that are going to share a few words about their service to the district and uh, formally wish them well on their retirement. So we'll start with uh, uh, Mr. Yates. Thank you, Mr. Scaling. Chris Cody, come on up here, would you? Come here. I've known Chris for quite a while now. This is her retirement message, and we've gone back about 20 years. I've had the privilege of hiring. It was Chris Masters at that time, now Chris Cody, and it's a was a fifth grade teacher at Hawkins, and now she's retiring. What's wrong with that picture? I don't know. <laughs> with that, still 22 and you're still? 122, 25. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with that, I'd like to say a few words to honor Chris. Chris earned her bachelor's degree from Central and her Eastern, uh, and master's from Eastern Michigan University. Chris taught actually Carmen Ainsworth about four years before applying to Brighton. Well. Chris loves to tell this story about the day I hired her. She was waiting anxiously by her phone days after the final interview. We were just talking about this the other day, right? And when she received that phone call, but it wasn't from me. It was her former principal, and I called for a reference. But much later that day, I really don't remember, um, I did call Chris letting her know that she was our top choice. And all that time, Chris thought I was too busy sipping a beverage by the pool. <laughs> And actually, it might be true, but I, did I say that? Yeah. I don't think that's really true. 
Anyways, it was a long time ago. Um, I've always appreciated Chris's caring ways. In fact, years ago, Chris said something about, well, Chris said her husband, um, Tom, who was here in the audience, was Bob Probert's cousin. I know. Well, if you know me, I might mention something about an autograph. And uh, next thing I know, there's a copy that was signed by the Bruges Brothers and a Bob Probert puck. Simply awesome. But that's Chris. She would just. Highly effective sense. She had. <laughs> <laughs> Go well, back to Chris. So she <laughs> she expanded her horizons by becoming an incredible district science coach and a superb enrichment teacher at Horning. And when teaching, her discussions were always student led. Chris always has a big heart and wants the best for every child and doesn't get better than that. Funny, as I was putting these words together, I went back over a speech I'd written for another staff member years back. And I mentioned that she was the voice of reason and, and her viewpoints were always spot on. Um, I, so I can honestly say that isn't Chris, sorry. But however, Chris's other attributes is definitely her wonderful sense of humor and her quick wit. And Chris always keeps us laughing all day long. In fact, to finish up, famous words from Ron Burgundy, the movie Anchorman. Chris lives by these words. I'm kind of a big deal. And this placard has been on her desk ever I since. I'm the secretary's desk. <laughs> stole their gift. I did. <laughs> All kidding aside, Chris Cody has been an exceptional teacher and coach for many years in Brighton. One thing I did mention <laughs> that every student that Chris has taught loves her. I'm so glad that our paths have come full circle and I couldn't be more thankful. Chris, our staff at Horning, and I will miss and I will miss your passion for life. I wish you all the best in your retirement. Thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> And I'm going to take my plaque. Big opportunities here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck. Mr. Renner? Renner. <laughs> well, let me just stay put there. Do you want to? All right. All right. She has to come up. She's coming up. Come on up, Jerry K. This is Jerry K. Thomas. Uh, she is Bennett Spencer for a number of years and been in Brighton 17 years, and we are excited. One thing I know about Jerry Kay is that she's an advocate for all students, so much so where I like to call or refer to you as the titan of early childhood education, and uh, the kids are better for that, the parents are better for it, I'm better for it as well. Spencer is better for it. Brighton Area Schools is better because of your time, your dedication, and your effort. Jerry Kay, uh, this is amazing. It's a time that uh, you get to go and know that uh, you went out on a high note. So we thank you. I thank you personally. Uh, we are all better because we know you. So thank you, Jerry Kay. Enjoy your retirement, every minute of it, and come back and be a sub if you can. <laughs> Sign up right over there. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Sign up right over there. Subs. Subs needed. Sign right up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd like to invite uh, Lynn Vollmer. Come on up. Lynn Vollmer's been in education 35 years. And 23 of those years have been at Spencer, which is amazing. Uh, 23 of those years have been at Spencer. So when you think of Spencer, when you think of Lynn, I want you to be known as, and you are in my heart, and you will be to all Spencer, and hopefully all of Brighton, is that you are a cornerstone of Spencer. You've seen many, many changes. And even though you're going to be gone enjoying 
and sailing away. <laughs> uh, you're going to be known as Spencer. And you were there. You saw transitions. You saw walls be built at Spencer, which is interesting in itself. Uh, <laughs> Lynn, you've, uh, you've helped me as a fourth grade teacher. I just shared this with her. I came to visit Lynn and to see, how do you teach fourth grade? I came to visit Lynn. So Lynn, not only a cornerstone of Spencer, but also helping me reach my goals as well. So I am personally just want to thank you for your time, your dedication and your effort. Um, Spencer family will miss you. Brighton area schools will miss you. And uh, anchors away, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> We've experienced Brenner Renner confusion uh, in the district in the past. Uh, Scott Renner, Principal Malp Intermediate School. This is my co-principal here, Mr. Dan Ayton. Lynn Vollmer was my daughter's fourth grade teacher, and she was fantastic. And uh, my daughter's fifth grade teacher right here. Uh, and I have two teachers retiring, so I want to bring Tammy Ritter and Lisa Carpenter up. These are original Maltby teachers, and when I say original Maltby, I mean going back 13 years to Maltby Intermediate School. Uh, and these guys came over uh, to help us open a brand new school. Other than the brick and mortar, we got to design the whole thing. A once in a career opportunity. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of work, yes. and it was a lot of fun. Uh, so uh, Tammy came over with her fifth grade team from Lindbaum Elementary. And she has 22 and a half years with Brighton Area Schools. And unlike uh, Mr. Yates, I didn't hire her, but I've almost <laughs> been an administrator long enough to have done that. And uh, Tammy is organized, dedicated teacher who cares about her students. She has always had a flexible can-do attitude. Tammy has always been a go-to person for our students who struggle in school the right combination of tough and tender to help them through their day. So she will be missed at Malpe. She is moving to her beautiful lake house up north, yes. surrounded by family, and we will miss her. Will miss Hard guys. to replace, irreplaceable. <laughs> Thank you. This is Lisa Carpenter, and Lisa, like I said, is original Mulpey as well. She taught at Horning Elementary prior to coming over to Mulpey. Lisa's been with Brighton Area Schools for 22 years and taught for seven years in Canada prior to that, and we still give her a hard time about her accent on occasion, don't we? Sorry, Sorry about Sorry. that. Uh, Lisa has been an innovating, reflective teacher who has engaged her students. Lisa was doing metacognitive activities with her kids before we were learning about doing that stuff with kids, and then it was good for them. Um, her student key learning weekly activities have become a, become a staple in almost all of our fifth grade classrooms. So Lisa leaves a legacy of a beloved teacher with her students and as a teacher of teachers, which is wonderful. So we wish her the best as she moves on to retirement and builds a beautiful lake house, right? That's right. <laughs> awesome. That's the plan.
All right. I'm Jen Hiller, and this is Patrick Borg. We are principals at Scranton Middle School. I'd like to call up Amy McCarthy. She has 30 years of experience here at Brighton Area Schools, and we are sad to see her leaving us. If you didn't notice, after all our students came up with the I Will Right Now Foundation, or sorry, not I Will Right Now, the uh, what's the foundation? Fund a life. Fund life. Those students, many of them, were actually yeah. leaders in the web program that Amy McCarthy yeah. brought to us at Scranton. So her legacy has lived on with us throughout all these years. And she has since passed the torch. Yeah. Um, but that program will continue to run and be a fundamental piece of our building and the transitioning of all of our seventh grade students. And that's a huge piece, thanks to you. So Amy is somebody that I've been able to lean on. Any kid who needs the extra love or support, you've always been that dependable piece. And I could always reach out to you and you'd say, I've got that. Um, you know, her, she has a heart of gold. She's always there for our students. And that's something that's super important for us. And we're just sad to see you go. And I've also affectionately called my room her storage room. So her daughter is getting married. <laughs> I love Marketplace. <laughs> I buy things. They deliver and I have been happy to house your storage <laughs> because I love you so much. So we're just happy to have you and you enjoy the best of retirement. And I've already offered her an educational assistant position as well. So we have that paperwork ready, I believe, over there. So, yeah. Okay. Let's check the numbers. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Um, I'm Colleen Deven, principal at the Bridge Alternative High School, and we are so sad to see Pam go. Um, she started in the district in 1997. She's been in the district for, do the math, 25 years, uh, at the Bridge for six. Um, she was a secretary at Hilton, and you were at Scranton, and um, also you were on cafeteria staff. Correct. Where, where, where were you? Uh, I was at the high school. I was okay. in the cafeteria at Hawkins. I ran okay. the kitchen at Limba okay. for a year. All right. And then moved to the high school for reception. Yep. So moved up, <laughs> up, up, up. So uh, at the bridge, we always talk about our bridge core values, um, responsibility, respect, and kindness. And Pam um, was always very responsible. She always made sure that I knew where I was supposed to be. So now I'm going to be lost without you. Uh, of course, respectful. She treated everyone with the utmost respect, um, even the most difficult students. And even if I gave her the face. <laughs> and kindness, um, she is the epitome of kindness. Um, when I think of Pam, I think of this quote uh, by Ma Maya Angelou. And now my sister is texting me, so I can't see it. <laughs> people will, for, will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. And Pam always made everyone, whether it was staff, students, or uh, parents, feel valued, heard, and loved. And we will, we will really miss you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hello, everybody. I'm Gavin Johnson, lead principal at the high school. I've got my partner, Matt Evans, here. I brought him here for two reasons. One, because Mrs. Price Tellner had Matt as a fifth grader back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> and secondly, because I'm probably going to cry. So I've been trying to avoid crying about Jen leaving for quite a while. I almost did it at the staff meeting today. So if I fall apart, Matt's here to take over. Jennifer has been in the district 31 years. Elementary teacher, counselor for tons of kids. She's the best counselor I ever met in my entire life, and I've been around a bunch of them. Um, and then Henry Vecchione and I begged her to become an administrator. Probably ruined her life in certain ways. Um, <laughs> but she is an amazing educator, counselor, and principal. I call her the heart of Brighton High School. She is the heart. She is amazing. She's a sister to me. She's a, I know her family. She's a great mother, a great wife, a great just all around person. She has meant more to me than maybe anybody in my career. She's made me a better man, better principal, because she's just got it all. So she's leaving. Um, Matt, you want to finish up? Talk yeah. to Jen as a, as a fifth grade boy. Yeah. Right. 25 years ago, right? So obviously, you know, we're going to miss Jennifer and, and we have loved working with her and getting to know her. And uh, obviously she's helped me immensely in the amount of time that I've had. So we share an office together and I'm always popping over and asking her for, you know, what would you do in this situation? And she's never turned me away yet. So uh, she better keep her phone on because we're probably going to be reaching out and making calls. And, hey, I know you're retired, but so uh, at some point she's going to block my number. Uh, but until that point in time, we are going to use and abuse that. So we definitely want to thank her for her service and uh, somebody who's going to be impossible for us to replace. But. We will do our darndest to carry on all the special things that she's done for our building and for our students and uh, do everything we can to make sure that we do her proud. Okay. Okay, how about one last round of applause for all of our retirees? On behalf of the school board, I want to say thank you so much for all of your years of service. Uh, we wish you the very best and Godspeed ahead. Thanks so much. All right. <laughs> Take a, 30 seconds here, or do you want to just yeah, power forward? Take a 30 right, seconds. Take about 30 seconds don't here. Want to some folks uh, enter and depart. Maybe one minute. <laughs> don't go too far, yeah. That was nice. Do we have any cards? Uh, we got uh, Nick's coming up here with one right here. So. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. We'll do this stuff. Okay, ready? Okay, um, one more topic here. This was great celebrating and uh, having a chance to celebrate with the students and celebrating with staff. 
Uh, I wanted to provide an update as we're ending our school year uh, because we have some heavy lifting to do this summertime um, to carry on some of the work that we've been doing for about a year and a half regarding safety and security in our district. So I thought I'd provide a few uh, updates, uh, big picture updates on some of the things that we've been working on. And then I have one specific thing that I'd like to talk with the board about tonight as, uh, as a next step that we'd like to see potentially for the 22-23 school year and beyond. Uh, in the spring of 2021, I had a chance to talk with Officer Bell. And uh, after the COVID-19 era, there was a lot of uh, protocols that changed during that time period. We met, we ended up talking about uh, returning our school district to the safer procedures that we had had prior to the prior to the pandemic began that work and officer bell has really led us through um, quite a bit of work and then after the unfortunate tragedy that took place in oxford we took that to the next level and uh, we've been working uh, for quite some time to take our security to the next level as a school district and trying to provide a uh, safe and secure environment for all of our students and staff um, a lot of this work has been behind the scenes and we have many people across the district that have been part of this work. So I wanted to just share some of the areas that we've been working on as a school district. Uh, Officer Bell uh, really led us in this area along with uh, Scott Story and uh, actually Chad Scaling also helped in this area, but dealing with procedures, um, particularly emergency procedures for fire tornadoes, but especially for lockdowns. Uh, also dealing with things such as threat assessments. How do we respond to threats? How do we uh, respond to students that are in distress? Um, we had extensive training. Um, Officer Bell led us through uh, training for all of our staff. And that con training continues and that will continue into next year. There's been a number of drills. Uh, we did a, a district-wide drill in January of this year. And uh, there's quite a bit of planning for next year. We have some different types of drills that we're gonna do this year to ensure preparedness. And I'm, um, I think we have a really good plan in that area uh, for the fall. Um, Officer Bell and others have also worked on our response plan. What do we do and how do we, how do we respond with varying circumstances? Staffing, this is something that the Board of Education has assisted with. Um, we've added a second police liaison uh, to this school district, and we've also added two additional mental health staff members, one at Maltby and one at Scranton, to help us be proactive in our efforts to uh, help students in crisis. We've uh, ex extended our ex external partnerships. Um, Mr. Scaling represents us at the county level as part of a countywide group looking at safety and security. And then we have a parent who is part of our, um, our uh, safety advisory board here in Brighton uh, that is on the state board that's looking at these topics. So we're getting a lot of ideas. We're collaborating, working again uh, to be as up to date as possible. And then one of our biggest external partners is the entire police departments. Um, obviously, Brighton City Police, the Sheriff's Department. Um, we're going to be adding even more with uh, Green Oak and the State Police Department as we move into next year. So we've had great partners from law enforcement. They've been fantastic for us. We've had a number of facility improvements, uh, everything dealing with access for first responders, addressing uh, doors. Um, we have more work to be done, but the safety of doors, propping of doors, um, we have uh, made improvements uh, to communication for re first responders by adding and addressing issues that are blocking communication within our buildings. So those are things like repeaters and whatnot. And those are, again, these are all behind the scenes. Officer Bell was the leader in all of these areas. Also working on things such as windows, window, window coverings. And again, this work continues, but the district is doing a great deal. And I just can't thank uh, all these people enough for the work they're doing. Additionally, um, our uh, police liaisons and others have identified best practices for staff. What are some of the common mistakes that are made? What are some of the uh, best practices that we have to help keep our students as safe as possible? At this time, our committee is also exploring, and we've also uh, invited our county to look at this. We're looking at some social media monitoring systems that pick up keywords within our, um, I think it's called a geofence, and uh, within that, so that we're able to uh, monitor social media. And then we're also looking at some camera detection um, software that assists it's some, somewhat like a metal detector, but it's more cutting edge. And uh, we know that Disney uses this, a lot of the large facilities use these, but we're exploring some of those as well. 
All of this work continues. We've been meeting pretty much every single week with the commission and looking at this. We have people from law enforcement. We have people that are part of security um, that uh, do security for large events that are helping to advise us and to give us some of the best information possible regarding safety and security. But tonight, uh, one of the things that I would like to present to the board, and I would like to ask your permission to bring somebody back for next week's meeting to talk about, is I want to talk about safety staffing. At this time, we have three officers in our district. We have two police liaisons with Officer Bell at the high school and uh, Deputy Schuster at Scranton. And we have Officer Mitchell, who is a retired police officer, but former police liaison at Maltby. What I would like to propose is that we look at retired law enforcement to place in each one of our four buildings. If, um, as you know, this is something that I did in my previous district, and uh, I would only recommend this if it's retired law enforcement that's trained, that our law enforcement community vets, you know, the company and help us with that. But if we have uh, skilled and uh, trained officers in each building to help us with the screening and uh, to provide uh, safety and to be a deterrent. Um, I think it's something that can really take our safety and security at our buildings to the next level. Um, I have, uh, I've made some initial contacts and I would like to bring back for discussion next week for the board. I'd like to bring in one of the companies that we could consider um, so that the board can ask questions, learn more about this, Ideally, I'd love to do this for the start of the 22-23 school year and beyond. Questions from the board on that request? Yeah, Dr. Ola, when I, when we, took, we talked about this years ago also about the idea, but my position is pretty solid that I'd like to see, let's say we bring in an outside company, but I'd like them to hire our local police officers that are retired. Okay, not somebody from another city or county, but somebody that's familiar with the community and be it from the you know sheriff's department, state police, or Brighton, Brighton City, even Howell, it wouldn't it isn't you know it only matters they're they're all part of this community, so that would be my recommendation. So if you're going to use an outside source, that's fine. But I'd like them to interview our our men and women, and then also a good balance between men and women in the in the police business because we have yeah. fifty percent female students, and I think that's a good balance. Okay, Absolutely, and I agree with this. And again, from former experience. In uh, my previous district, um, we hired people that were local, that uh, we had recommendations from the sheriff's department in Oakland County at that time. So if we were to go with the company that I that I do know of, uh, we would work with local police departments for recommendations, and that they're gonna recommend people that understand the area. But it's not just uh, an officer, there's a cer certain skill set that a person needs to be able to work in an elementary school. There's a certain demeanor uh, that's really needed to be in an elementary school. And this this company that I know, and I'm sure that others, they understand that as well. You want to have somebody in there that uh, students really look up to and they feel safe around. And uh, so anyway, that I would agree with you. That's and part. expand on that one second then. So in that, we used to do have programs like the D.A.R.E. program and different things that were available. Maybe in this, we'll call it uptick for law enforcement being present, we can go back to providing those classes as well from the law enforcement that's present in the schools. So we have a teaching environment as well from our law enforcement officers, which they couldn't get to us as much as we needed them in the old days. They would spread themselves out through the county. And as the programs were run, they're very successful. I, I think there was a lot of impact from them. So think about that too, what we can expand. One, the primary goal would be the obviously safety and security of our, of our students and our, and our staff. Um, but again, how can we expand and make that a you know, they're, they're going to be there and uh, could be a great opportunity to uh, for our students to learn sure. and, and be able to have uh, more more tools in their toolbox as they navigate this life. All right, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when we continue this discussion, I would really like to hear about the administration's expectations and plans for how the additional um, staff would coordinate with Officer Bell and our existing police liaisons, as well as the administration when it comes to new student discipline issues. I think making sure that we've got a clear understanding of, of how all of those pieces will fit together will ensure the success of, of what we do. Absolutely, and I can I can speak from experience on this. Um, the Our liaisons are the lead. 
They're the liaisons from the police department, um, and they would lead this effort. They would help to coordinate, and the, if it was this company, um, they take the lead from those officers. Um, when it comes to school, there are a certain area where they take the lead, and it's a very small group where they take the lead, uh, other than screening and you know vetting of uh, visitors to buildings. But when it comes to things like implementing items from an IEP and things, our staff leads that. But there's a clear protocol with that, and I think we'd be happy to talk that through. That's a great question, and you're exactly right because you don't you want everybody to work in sync. You want everybody to be on the same team, and that's key to making something like this work effectively. So, thank you. I did. The company, uh, we're going to look to see if there's other companies that provide this. The one thing is. I would not recommend any company that is not committed to uh, law enforcement that's trained. Uh, I think the training is really important. Um, we don't just want anybody in there. You have to have people that I would recommend law enforcement trained to put in our building. Company that I'm talking about will not hire anybody that is not uh, law enforcement trained. And then they keep them up to speed on all of the active training um, that's required of police officers. In addition, this company also trains them on some of the basic things that employees need, such as um, the uh, the response to students, uh, some of the laws, and the uh, what is the what's the program? Sorry, thank you. CPI is uh, is an important uh, protocol that people have to use. They're trained in all of those CPR, all of those protocols that they have as well. So all of that training. Yeah. Support of this, I think it's great. Um, are you kind of asked the question if you could bring it for action? Are you just asking for a consensus of the board and go at it, or do you want to? Put I, it so I, I'd like to bring it for a future action topic, right. and okay. let's and I'd like to bring in uh, some representatives from this company just because I've worked with them in the past and I think they would be able to answer a lot of your questions directly. I'd love to bring them back, but I didn't want to just have them show up without asking the board if it's okay. I'd love to bring them in on the 20th. And if it seems like a, a pathway that we're interested in going down, perhaps that could be an action item in July um, to give them enough time to go out and get the right people and to get all of our ducks in a row for the beginning of the next school year. I definitely would support it, but um, I'm just wondering, is there any other companies you'd be looking at or just this one? That so I only know of the one. Um, I've asked uh, Officer Bell and Deputy Schuster to see if they can find other companies in the area that um, that do this. There's a conference that is next week. Um, it's a safety conference for the state of Michigan. We have some of our principals that are going to be going to that as well. There's law enforcement as well as administration. That might be a spot where we might run into uh, some other companies. So they're looking to see so that we can have a couple options for the board. Yep. Okay. I think you got it. So, so I'll have some folks back here next week, and I will be ready to answer any questions that you have at that time. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate that, and thank you for supporting the, I, the discussion. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Arlo. This was just to call the public. We ask that you to participate. You call I do. The cards in the back and bring it up to us. Do you have any? Did you get time? Ms. Krebs will keep time. Um, you have three minutes. She'll What's that? put the uh, <laughs> yellow flag up once you get close to that. Uh, and then the red goes off your time. Um, Mr. Nick Shelton. Uh, thank you, board. I want to start by thanking Officer Bell for what you do to keep our kids safe. All of you are SOs. And I was going to talk about uh, the transparency issue, but I can't tell you how much I support the idea that's been brought for here uh, with what's going on in the world right now, the craziness to think that we'd have local community law enforcement in the buildings with our kids would be huge, huge. So I'm, I'm thank you, Dr. Outlaw for that. But I wanted to say thank you to the board and for Dr. Outlaw um, at the, the last board workshop, several community members requested that transparency um, or at least things revolving around transparency to kind of help the public in the district come to some common ground 
um, to develop some dialogue after I think some of the confusion that's happened during COVID and even even before that. And and uh, President uh, Myers and Dr. Outlaw allowed that on the agenda. And I wanted to, to thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Um, the discussion that I think that needs to take place to continue to build back the trust to the community and the, and the board members and, and us as the community, right? So I thought that was a really, really big deal. And I wanted to thank you for that. Uh, the, the last thing I wanted to thank you for as a football coach, right, is getting right on getting us a uh, new training staff in that weight room, right? Um, my son's in there four days a week. So we missed, I think, only a week and a half after losing Barwis. And my, my boy comes home and tells me how much he really likes the new training staff. So the guy's on it. He's from Michigan State says he throws 135 pounds around on his shoulder like it's nothing. And uh, he, re he really likes working with them. So I really appreciate the, the competitive edge. I think that we have at Brighton because not only do we have a state of the art training uh, facility, but the, the, the people that you guys put in there to work with those kids that allows the coaches to coach and leaves the training, you know, to the trainers. It, it, we definitely did not have that at Huron Valley and I love it here. So thank you for getting on that. It was awesome. So thanks. That, that goes out to uh, Mr. Thompson, was very aggressive on that one and uh, made sure that we didn't have any gaps. So kudos to Mr. Thompson. Do you have anyone else? Uh, right there? Okay. No one else wishes to speak to the We'll move to for action. Uh, regular mi minutes of May 9th, 2022. Do we have a motion? Support. Ms. Krabs. Support by Ms. Mitchell. Do we have any discussion? See no discussion. All that I say aye. 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 Um, may eight for no. We have four ayes. We have two not present. Here, five. Five ayes. Uh, next, special minutes of May 23rd, 2022. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Ms. Krabs. Support. Support by Ms. Mitchell. Any discussion? I see no discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Three ayes. I must have abstained. Ms. Green must have abstained. Two abstentions. Two not present. Does that pass for the three vote? It does. It does. Right. Yeah, I said. Um, move on to the human resources report. Yes, good evening. Uh, the human resources report is presented for, for your review, uh, review and approval. We have uh, six additional retirement or, and or resignations. Uh, also on this list, we have four uh, teachers, uh, new hire teachers. Just remember that we plan on doing in our August, as we did last year, our formal introduction of all of our teachers, but this is on the list to move them forward in the hiring process. The other two individuals uh, that are on this, I wanted to share a little bit about. Uh, one is uh, Ms. Ella Fletcher. We're excited to recommend Ms. Ella Fletcher to the Board of Education as our choice for Director of People Services and Enrollment. She's worked in education for 20 years, most recently has worked for Oakland Schools ISD as a support specialist with MyStar, which is our student information system. Um, and also uh, prior to that, she had worked with Oakland County, uh, Oakland Schools Technical Campus, where she was coordinating student enrollment and pupil, pupil accounting information with many different districts that sent students to that particular facility. Uh, Ella will be a great addition to our district team. Okay. Also uh, present here this evening is uh, Ms. Danielle Schmidt. Uh, we are recommending Ms. Danielle Schmidt to the Board of Education as our choice to become the next principal at Spencer Elementary School. Danielle has been in education for 18 years with 10 years as a first grade teacher, two years as a literacy specialist, and six years as a middle school assistant principal in Howell. She is a strong instructional leader, a successful building administrator, and she has a personality that will fit incredibly well at Spencer and with the district. We ask that you approve the human resource report as presented. Do you wanna stand up and wave our, here's Danielle. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Skelly. Uh, do we have a motion? So moved. Moved by Ms. Reed. Support. Support by Ms. Mitchell. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, 
two nays. Taking no nays. With two absent, five yeses, the yes have it. Um, we got to student handbooks. Just so can I just say one thing? Yes. Just uh, thank you to all of those. We've had some retirements, resignations. We have folks here. I want to thank everybody for their service. Some of those that are resigning, we have some people that, you know, husbands are transferred and some of those things. So thank you all of those people for their service. We're really excited about the talent that we're getting. I want to give out kudos to our principals, our HR staff, um, the teachers that are part of these committees. They've been really aggressive. And one of the things that they've been doing is they've been having teaching candidates in teaching our students so they can see them in action. And I can tell you that it's um, it really has made a difference. It really separates the candidates to see them actually working with students and to see how they respond. So that's kudos to Mr. Scaling has really set that up and made that a priority. Um, so great job. We're getting some outstanding teachers yet again last year. We had a lot of home runs and uh, we're off to a great start. And then uh, uh, Ms. Schmidt, um, we're just thrilled to have her on board. She lives here in Brighton. Uh, she's got experience and she's got the whole thing. And she's got Mr. Renner just down the street to, you know, buy him and everything. Look at that, they're already a team. But we're absolutely thrilled to have you on board and looking forward to working with you. So thank you. Moves to for future action. Thank you. Move on to the LESA PAC appointment. Uh, right, Dr. Ella. Okay. Uh, is Ms. Morningstar here? I am. Okay. Would you mind coming up just really quickly, introducing yourself? Thank you so much for being here. Oh, yeah. Um, Sorry, the cottonwood trees are just like really giving me the best <laughs> time of my life right now. So sorry about that. Uh, my name is Katie Morningstar. I was the LESA PAC rep for um, the Early Childhood Special Ed program um, starting about a year and a half ago. And suddenly my kids go into kindergarten and so I can't represent that group anymore. So um, he is going to be in Hawkins this year starting in kindergarten. His name is Declan. He is cute as heck. <laughs> and um, I just am very, very much looking forward to making everything better for him and kids like him and also other kids because I have two more. So, yeah. And just to, to share, um, this morning side has, you know, she's morning been- Morning star, sorry. Morning Star it's okay. has it's been okay. um, has been part of this group, you know, in this other role and she comes highly recommended um, by our uh, folks at LESA. Um, so I just wanted to share that as well. Oh, I forgot to mention, I was the secretary this past year and I am the, um, the incoming chair this um, coming school year. So, can, can I just ask for clarification? So yeah. you're currently the early childhood rep and since your child is out of there, you can no longer do that. Is that kind of, and then would you transition to be the Brighton rep because your student is now a Brighton student? Pretty much, that? yes. Any other questions for this morning, Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you so much for serving that role. Yep. Do we have a motion? So moved. Support. You, oh, sorry. Ms. Krabs, support. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Say aye. 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 Five yeses. All those nays. Zero. Two absent. Five days. That passes. Uh, just as a quick reminder, um, this work's been going on for many months and uh, we presented this to the board. We had a group that presented this in uh, May and I think we believe we, uh, we had this for future action also at another meeting in May and it's up for action this evening. Um, very excited about this, a strategic vision moving forward. Um, this is a shell that will help guide us um, for the next five years of our work. And um, obviously we're, we're asking for your approval. Thank you, Dr. Outlaw. Do we have a motion? So moved. Three, Ms. Mitchell support. All those in favor? I'm yeah. sorry, okay. discussion. My apologies, discussion, Ms. Reed. Um, the section on um, some of the, the quantitative achievements that we'd like to have, um, I think the version that I got still had the, the X's and the percentage. Correct. When and how are we going to fill those in? Yeah, so um, we will have to do our baseline survey of students uh, in order to set those baseline. And then what we were going to do is 
we were going to set it and then come back to you to revise those numbers once we do that baseline survey. So um, the work is being done now. This is not the best time to survey students two days before school gets out, but this is something that we would do at the beginning of the year and return to you um, to uh, reset those benchmarks or to officially set those benchmarks. Because we, because we, the, the key is that we want, we want it to be realistic, but we want to stretch from that number. So like getting an idea of where students are now will give us um, the idea of how far to, that we can stretch. Um, I don't have any other questions, but I just wanted to take a second to thank all of the people that put in all of the time that it took to have the discussions and, and to put this document together. I think it's a, a great um, guide for the district as, as we set goals and make plans for how we are going to achieve those goals over the next five years. So thank you to everyone who was involved in that. That's um, So kind of following up on Ms. Reed's questions or comments about the um, quantitative data, but you are continuing to work on these even without having the data right now, the, the, oh, the number. Absolutely. The, yeah. these, are, these are indicators that we come back to to say that we're headed in the right direction. Our pathways to success is what, that's where the heavy lifting is going to be. That's dealing with curriculum instruction, assessment, intervention, and culture. Thank you. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of thought process behind this. The key that I want to know is that this is a, a moving kind of buildable model. This is not etched in stone in a way because I don't support certain things and, and I don't know that the board would support certain things, providing we know that's what's going on, because there's a lot of things in here that will do great things for students. We'll be able to monitor, build, and grow. I heard that when Common Core was introduced also, and I've seen a lot of negative impact from Common Core education. And this, again, is a great start. But traditional education, again, teaching our students to read, write, you know, arithmetic, is very foundational. As we go off, looking for ways to make it all better. Well, we don't want to forget the core ethics behind what could start it to be good to start with. We don't want to repair things that aren't broken. And if they don't, I don't know how to put that really right, but it's, it's, it's like, again, give them the solid, give them the tools, give them the skills. And that's really what is being said in all of this. But I also think fundamental basic education is a way to do that if they, if they have that opportunity. And so, you know, there's some key terms out there, this, this DEI, and uh, which it may be incorporated here in some fashions, no? I mean, it's that we, we're focusing on every student being their best, growing their future, and obviously that's, that's our focus. I don't focus know how to peel it out of there, Dr. L. I honestly don't know how to peel the onion back to say what's, guess what I'm getting at. Sure. I wouldn't know, but I don't support happen, it. Happen to answer any? Yeah, but I don't support it being part of our curriculum. And and so in that, I'm gonna approve this tonight, right. but I'm, I'm gonna say that that I, I think it should be looked after carefully and, and, and built up so it meets the needs of our students and, and follows um, core values that I believe this community supports 100% the community. And, um, but not off far left, far right, it needs to, be centered. And again, I, I go back to when my principal, Bob Scratton, was here and I was in this building. And I recall him, I told you guys a few times I was in his office every now and then. And the reality was it was. But the discussion was, we make choices. And if you make this choice, you wind up here. And if you make this other choice, you wind up over here. That was pretty fundamental in the seventh grade when you hear that from a leader. And it's like, well, really, if I do that, I'm going to wind up, you know, in a bad area? Yeah, it is. Why don't you just try to do this and go this way? So in that vision, he, he was a brilliant teacher. And he taught us how to swim, taught us how to, I mean, we played football, we did everything you can think, golfed at Burroughs Farms, but all those good things. I think about what we did in middle school, the chess club. Okay, all the stuff that went on, it was healthy. It didn't have all this other stuff. And, you know, I, I think, you know, personally, you know, we should have almost a, a parent handbook in a way about these video games and the different things that are going on and how kids, you know, detach. I heard one of the teachers um, talking about the, uh, 
Oh, I mean, it's been going on for ages where the kids had to check in their phones when they get into class and talked about the development that took place. I mean, let's let's go back to some basics here to get the kids started before all this other stuff comes in and then bombards them. I mean, it's really a, it's unbelievable. Can you imagine the technology and what it's done and, and the powerful computers that are used now with these, these handheld phones and, and they're, they're more powerful than my office computers were 10 years ago. Um, so that's my concern is I don't want to get too, I want to, I need to make sure that we're covering the basics, the fundamental things for health and wellness that come with providing a safe place for our students to be and to learn in and, sure. and not putting them at risk because of ideologies that could be extreme. And, I, and I'm serious about that. So well, and I believe we, we all represent the, the safety and wellness of our students here. I don't think there's anybody on the board that doesn't. We may have a little different idea on how we're going to get there, but I hope we can meet in the middle. Sure. Yeah, so just, just uh, um, appreciate everybody's comments on this. Um, this is, I, I would call this as shoring up our foundation as a district. A lot of what this is, is is about fundamentals. It's about ensuring that we have fidelity with the curriculum. It's ensuring that we use best practices in teaching. It's ensuring that we use the best assessment so that we know that students are learning. It's ensuring that we have a systematic way of approaching students when they're not achieving. It's ensuring that we provide an environment where students are gonna be able to grow and develop and learn to their best of their ability. So those are things, and agree with it, this is a simple plan. There's nothing in here that's gonna be revolutionary. We are not ideological at all in the way that we're approaching this. Um, but this is, a, this is a document that at its core is about teaching and learning. It's about student success. It's about every kid reaching their potential. And um, I'm proud of the work that the 47 people that worked on this put this together. But I also would emphasize, I said this when we presented this, this is a dynamic document, not a static document. We're get, we have to continue to look at this and modify and adjust goals as we go through things. There may be targets that we meet very quickly and we need to substitute something else that takes us to that next step. And um, so anyway, we'll continue to talk about this. And uh, is there any other questions or anything on this? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed to A. Five yeses, zero nays, two F. Um, MHSAA resolution. Um, Mr. Thompson not being here, Dr. Outlaw. Sure. Um, this is an annual document. I, I know you, you see this one time a year, but this is a form that the board will be asked to approve at the uh, June 20th meeting. And the key things in it, it's uh, through the MHSA, it basically indicates that we continue to wish to be in state tournaments. And then important for them is that we fill out our enrollment by level, so it allows them to place us in the right places for the next school year. So questions on this? Are there any changes in it this year than in the past? No, the, the only change would be the enrollment, you know, always fluctuates a little bit, but we're gonna, we're always in the high top category in every group. We're always division this is one. Only for the athletics that are in MHS. M yes, MHS. this is an MHSA specific document. Yes, yeah, it's their document that we send to them. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Atlaw. Field trip international, Ms. Mosher. Uh, so at our next meeting, we'll be bringing forward a field trip for our, one of an international trip. It's been a while since we've put one of these forward. There. Um, is the, the form there. It does list three different quotes, so you can see the different quotes that were obtained. This is for a Spanish tri trip to Ecuador, uh, South America, and uh, if you have questions, obviously let me know, and we'll get those answered for our next meeting. I've got a question. Um, I noticed that some of the locations that they are planning on going to are on the State Department's list for heightened risk at risk level two instead of a risk level one. And I didn't see anything in the materials that specifically addressed how they would handle the physical security of our students yeah. while we're there. There were a lot of uh, mentions of their security in the sense of they have people on staff to sure. deal with emergencies, but not how we are physically protecting our students if we're going to send them to a place that we already know is, sure. is has a heightened risk of, of crime. and. Yeah. So I'll get those answers for you for sure. Um, so usually it's like a risk of three or four is where we kind of say we might want to step back a little bit. Usually one or two is, I don't want to say a normal, but 
a normal a little bit, but I can definitely figure out how that's going to work. And just remember, we also keep a five to one or even sometimes four to one ratio when we do international travel. So we do put a heavy emphasis on our own staff or adults with students too, but I will get that information for you as well. If I could just add one thing, you know, I've, I've done quite a bit of uh, traveling in my life and the United States has areas of the country that would be uh, safety risk number four. And there's areas of the country that would be the safest places in the world. And um, these travel companies, this is what they do for a living. And um, they, they, go to, they go to Brighton and you know, they go to the areas that are safe. And um, they're, so just so you know that, that oftentimes they slap a label on an entire country when there's areas that are safe and other areas that are not. And that's some of the things that I'm sure would be that the company would probably talk about where they go within countries. In South America, Ecuador is probably the safest country in among the safest in Latin America. Um, and again, they could probably talk about that a little bit, but um, a lot of it has to do with the oil pipelines and they're kind of a, they've got a lot of protection there is what I would just put out there. I completely understand that. I, there was one particular city, um, Guayaquil, that, Guayaquil, that yeah. caught my attention because that was specifically called out as an area that within Ecuador had a heightened level of concern for the state government. So sure. Thank you. I, I will get that out. Uh, moving on to budget hearing, uh, Mr. Engelter. Just a reminder that we do have our, our annual budget hearing scheduled for next uh, week. Um, we do have a statutory requirement to adopt a budget for the 22-23 school year. And prior to doing so, we must hold a budget hearing in order uh, for that to happen for, for input. So we will be doing that next week. Just wanted to remind everybody so you can be there. And just as a reminder, that's at 6.30, not 7 next week for anybody listening to us on the live stream, but it's at 6.30, not 7. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Student handbooks, Mr. Scarry? Yes, student handbooks uh, were provided uh, for review. Uh, if there's any, uh, those changes there in that format are, are the recommended changes from the high school, Scranton, and Maltby. Um, uh, let, let us know if you have any questions. Yes. I have a, I have a couple. Um, first of all, um, I like the way Scranton has more information than just what we had for Malfi. Malfi just had the pages that were being changed, so it was helpful to see more of the document, like for Scranton. But my first question was on page, I know, page 30. Um, this is where the attendance policy is changed from five unexcused absences or 12 full days to uh, maintain a 90% attendance rate. Um, just... Can I just, yep. what's the reason for that? that? That language puts them more in line with what the, the county expectations and I believe the also the, the MDE requirements to monitor and track student attendance and have interventions in place when it reaches that threshold. So one of the things I was wondering is because they can classify a 90% at any point along in the year, whereas the, you know, the five and 12 means you have to get to this you know, mm -hmm. static number. My, could, could there, you're saying that intervention then could happen sooner? Yes. Yeah. yeah and they do at times. That's uh, in, in my experience there, that's, that's just kind of the baseline number, but certainly if you find out that there's attendance issues um, that are even projected to go further, they'll do interventions up until that point. That's not, they can't, it's not that they can only do something at that point. Okay, I'm not, you know, complete, I'm not sure. contesting. I just want a clarification for what um, another comment about the, Transportation. So we're waiting on bus regulations. Can you? Yes, my understanding is there's going to be some updated to just their procedures and things. And yes. Will, we, will this be coming from LESA or will it be coming from our transportation department? Our transportation director, I'm sure, with things from LESA as well. Will we have input on this once we get to see that? I mean, will, will it come before the board for approval at that point? Y yes. My, my question is if, if we, I haven't received those to this point yet, I don't know if Dr. Arlo has. So those changes may not actually make this round of, of the handbook because they have publication dates that they need to meet. So if those, if any of those procedural things that they'd like to make change are delayed, they won't make it to the handbook for publication. But they can still be taken and they can still be applied because this, if it's not in the printed handbook, then does it have to wait a whole year for it or can it be updated in the online? We could update it on the digital files, yes, yes. Um, okay, another comment on page 41. Um, I just, again, I mean, I'm not, I'm not contesting no, no problem. any of these. I just want sure, to clarification absolutely. on some of these. 
Um, on page 41, I see that the um, factors requiring consideration, I kind of like this idea that you're laying out why it is that you know, everything is not always going to be equal. You know, all, all offenses aren't always the same. There's several factors that could be impacted, like age of the student, disciplinary history of the student, and so on. Um, I really like that kind of flexibility. But um, it seems much more fair and reasonable. But what kind of oversight will there be that it, there's consistency across across the students? So that actually comes from, that's a requirement that was put into place, I think, 2000, don't quote me on the date, but I think it was back in 2016 or 17 where uh, student discipline had to be, before you formally assigned student discipline, you had to take those seven factors of consideration into place. But it wasn't in the handbook? Is it wasn't it? in the handbook yet. Okay. So certainly they were doing those things, but we wanted to be clear about publishing that in the handbook so that all those things are taken into consideration. And they do that on a case-by-case -case basis. So then is there any kind of record across for administrators to like look across what what's typically done at each of the different kind of with the different the different ranges. Nothing that's not in their handbook that they would use as a guide to that they've used for years to if, if I understand the question correctly. Not in the student handbook, but for the administrators, kind of like an administrator. Yeah, or, I do not believe there's anything in place that 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 they do a lot of collaboration, but nothing formal that's written to provide them a guide. Uh, they take those very much on a case by case situation. Similar rules and similar situations are treated similarly across the district? They, other than, you know, uh, uh, at some of those more challenging times, you know, those situations where they have to make bigger decisions, they certainly, you know, call and, and we talk about those types of things to help students' consistency. But with respect to some of the easier one, two things that are a little bit more routine, detentions, things like that, they, they provide the consistency uh, in, the, in the own buildings there in their collaboration with their assistant principals or the or the, the co-principals that exist there. I think that communication, just to jump in on that, Please. that communication is not just within building, for example, at high school, but even between buildings where they try to have consistency. That communication is the key to being cons consistent. So we heard it earlier how Mr. Evans was talking about talking with uh, Mrs. Bryce Tilner. So when there's a discipline situation, you know, I have, We've been, I think three of us have been high school administrators. You communicate that and you say, hey, this is what I have going on. This is the situation. This is what I was thinking. And they said, well, I went with this two days, you know. So that communication level is how that you can um, create uh, that consistency between cases. I think that's an important one. The reason it's difficult in writing is that every scenario is just a little bit different. And uh, so that's why it's a range when it comes to uh, being in a, Right, and I think, and I think you know that doesn't yeah. get laid out in the student handbook. I understand that this is what right. we're looking at right now is the student handbook. So we have that yep. kind of that paragraph that lists that. But the idea is that we have consistency within buildings and across buildings. Right, just would want to kind of see. And that's really important. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I was asking about. Yep. Okay, um, and then if I look on pages forty-three and forty-four, so it, um, there's there's not a lot of red but I kind of see them what's happening here is we have some of these offense of the um, consequences for these offenses. And then is that, that that paragraph that I mentioned earlier, this is where that kind of is taken into account. I just correct clarification yes. on that. So where, for example, a suspension is one to 10 days, kind of taking those seven factors into account. Right, you had to kind of remove uh, the automatic things that used to be in place. Like sometimes I remember when I did my old handbook, we used to say first offense, one two hour detention, second offense this, you had to remove that, take all those things factors into consideration, and then you know, you could you return to what your consistent practice has been and what you're doing building wide and district wide. Okay. Um, so then looking forward on page 60, it looks like then the high school is now adding that kind of section. Correct. Is it in Maltby already or is it not in there yet? That that kind of that paragraph. That I need to check. And then I yep. guess we, we aren't looking at the elementary schools, but then I would ask about that when moving forward too. Correct, not at this time, but also to know that um, when we uh, finish the process of taking on our new policy package, there's going to need to be uh, a lot more of the handbooks to be updated and be coincided. So we knew this is kind of a first step to get us in that direction. And we know we have more work to do when those come into play and to finish this, the, the, the process. 
Great, thank you. Yeah, you bet. I just have a real simple question for you, Kimberly. Um, I guess my question is, and it kind of can stem from something Ms. Krebs just said. So if it's not in this book yet, because it hasn't been updated, um, and it pertains to any of this information, is there, it, must it be applied at that point, or is it a situation where, well, it's not in the book yet, so we can kind of still go by our old rules until we see it? Because my understanding is, is it kind of, some of the stuff gets gets changed, but then it doesn't get published for a little while, especially since right. we review it. No, we would we would follow we would need to follow the laws and our scoreboard policies, and those would come first, and then the handbook either supports that or we need to follow it, even if it's a little bit of dated language, because that'll happen sometimes. Okay. Sometimes a policy will change in the middle of the year. Sometimes one of the laws may change that affect how we do things, and that dictates how we function, then we update the handbooks to support that, those changes. Thank you. Well, I just have a question back about the transportation stuff. So do you have an idea when that those updates will be coming? I will find out, and we'll make sure we have that at the, at the next meeting for you, yes, if there. Can, can, are we, and when we're done with the book, um, the, I need to go back to budget for a minute. Can, when you're, when you can. All right. Any more discussion on this matter? I have a, a question. Typically, we are, are printing hard copies of these in the um, the calendars that we hand out at the high school, and I think at Scranton as well. Are, where are we on our schedule for for doing that this year? So I I, I don't know. Uh, Mal, are you talking about printing these handbooks? At the, I know it's it's usually part of the calendar that, that's available at the high school, and I think it is at Scranton as well. I don't know if that's true. I can't remember if that, they do that. At so I don't know that they print the handbooks anymore uh, for high school students. Malt be still intended they want to, and I believe Scranton, oh, they're not still here. Uh, I, yeah, Matt's here. At the high school, we are not going to be putting the student code of conduct in our planner for next year. So otherwise, we would have already had to have it to the printer. We are going to put that online for everybody and make sure that in all of our communications to incoming parents and current parents, they know exactly where they can access it, okay. but it will not be part of our planner. Thank you. Any more discussion on this matter? Mr. Kelly, you have a question regarding budget? For yeah, I do. I do. Um, Michael, so this uh, um, our budget hearing, will that be open to the public where they can ask you questions? That's what get, the purpose of the budget hearing is. That's correct. So okay. the, if the community has a question besides board members, it's not like a call to the public, though, or if they can actually come up and ask questions. That's correct. Okay. Because I I would like to make sure that we're following the right stuff here. We don't we don't have a finance committee, so specifically. And your other districts that you worked in historically, did they all have finance committees? No, sir. They didn't? I've, I've had them over the years, but I, for the most part, I'd say I have not had them over the years. Okay. Historically here, we have had finance committees. And, and what it allowed was participation from outside the board and citizens, and they could come and come to the finance committee meetings without a problem. And it gave us, I felt, a better understanding of what's going on behind the scenes. So I'd like to put that up, and I had asked a last board meeting to have a few things even on the agenda for this one, which it's not important today, I don't think, because it's nothing critical. We're going to have an open meeting on it. It's not a big deal, but it is in the long haul. So what I'd like to for us to consider, though, is putting committees back in place in these strategic areas, and one would be curriculum, and the other and the other is finance. And uh, so that's just my opinion on that. But as long as the citizens can ask you questions and not call the public, I'm good with it. Is this yeah, the first time that we historically have done that, though, where the citizens could come in and... No, that's a statutory requirement every year before the board adopts a budget. You okay. have to hold a budget hearing that allows for input, uh, not only from board members, but the public. Okay. Um, so Good. that has been done, at least since I've been here, uh, we've held a budget hearing every year. And in that budget hearing, though, everybody's been alerted to that case that they're available comments, public comments welcomed. I mean, because most of the time, if you're in a standard operating procedure of this plan here and it's only parents are only allowed to talk during call the public, they wouldn't know that that hearing would allow participation. So what I can tell you is we're required by law to publish it in the, in the paper. 
that okay. it's available and that the hearing is coming. Uh, that has to be posted at least six days prior to the meeting. So that went in the paper okay. yesterday. Um, so uh, we're following all of the legal requirements. Um, I can't recall whether or not I have said we are now open for public, you know, anything like that. But we do hold that hearing every year. Um, well, I would suggest we do that. We just say if there's anybody in, in the community that has anything that they'd like to contribute or have right. questions we, specifically. We answer, you know, I answer whatever questions are put I know that. I'm aware of that. Our ability and, yeah. you know, but we do adopt the budget at a functional level so we don't get down into the into the weeds on every right. single line item and everything. So in, in as far as the finance committee goes, that's a, a, what the board wishes to do. However, right. it, however that's fine. It, it plays out. The budget hearing itself is just a statutory requirement we have to do prior to adopting. So that's it's that's what we'll do next week. So all right, thank you. You're welcome. All right. That being the last thing on our list, I'd like to tell you that the next regular meeting is Monday, July eleventh at seven PM. I want to thank all those that participated tonight for their participation and thank you very much. Have a great night.